Excellency, I have a guest with me, a very special guest. She's the, sen she's the senior advocate, Dr. Skita, and also the proprietor of the Skita and Company Advocates. We're even shooting the video to our office right now. Thank you so much for meeting us to your office. So I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, my name is Dr. Skita, as you've heard. I've uh, been in practice for, I think, 33 years now. I was admitted to practice in 1988. Uh, I have worked in the corporate world. I have uh, been employed as a lawyer in legal firms. And now I run my office from uh, 1995. I appreciate you coming to my channel. So I want to ask, I want to, ask to talk about your experience as a lawyer, because most of my viewers are young advocates. So oh, take us through your experience starting your own law firm, your entire journey as a lawyer? Um, I am, I'm naturally a storyteller, so if I go into lots of details, I will probably be here the whole day or two days or even up to a week. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let it flow as, as I talk. And thanks for having me. I am really privileged. I think uh, this is going to it's going to let our sisters get us to get to so many so many young lawyers and I'm happy about that. Um, Dr. Skita is my name as I said at the beginning, 58 years. I celebrated my 15th year uh, on the 26th of December. Um, everybody calls me Coco. Uh, many other nicknames which I'm not going to reveal, but I'm sure some of you know them. Um, I started off, uh, when I was ad admitted, March 1988, um, I didn't know what to do. I did not know where to go. I didn't know whether I wanted to work magistrates. You know, just find out how they are finding everything and uh, what they were doing. Uh, eventually, I think I made, I made up my mind that I wanted to get into practice. So I looked for a job and I got one. It wasn't hard for us to get jobs these days because we were not many. Uh, I got a job, um, was employed, worked there for, I think, I, I think my, first and foremost, my salary was about 7,000 or 8,000, I'm not quite sure, I uh, can't remember exactly what it was, although I never got paid, so it is not a new phenomenon, a phenomenon when you don't get paid by the people who employ you, although it is something that ought to be discarded, that ought to be discarded, and personally I condemn, so I was there, I would go, uh, out um, to Kangundo, to Tala, to Machakos uh, for cases because the farm did a lot of running down matters. And uh, when I worked there is when I decided I was not ever going to handle running down matters. Uh, but that's a whole story on, uh, on itself. Anyway, I worked there for about four months, um, did like it. Uh, because of not being paid and then also the atmosphere was not really, really very good. So I left and walked into another job. Uh, I decided I wanted, didn't want to work there. One start on a Monday, so I went. I uh, I did a summary of what needed to be done in each of the files that I was handling, and I said bye to uh, who was uh, a partner in the farm that I'd been working with. So he's the one I said bye to, but I did say hi bye to the owner of the farm, the actual owner of the farm because uh, I, I was smarting from, from not being paid. Uh, so I got employed and I worked. I, I leaned on debt collection. And um, the, the, the kind of personality I have helps me a lot. I don't, when I'm doing debt collection, it is rare that I will not be able to collect what is owed. Uh, I did a good job. And I'm not just saying I did a good job because I know I did a good job. Uh, when I decided uh, not to continue working there after about a year because I needed to move on, uh, I went down home and the people that employed me after that, the managing director came looking for me. I had been handling their work and they were happy as to how I was handling their work. So when I left, they asked my boss where I was. He said, oh, I was not coming to the office. And he didn't tell them that I'd resigned. Just told them I was not coming to the office and what. So the manager the director looked for me. And one morning, there was a ring on my, in my house. And I went and opened the door. And there's a managing director of the company. And he told me they wanted to give me a job. And uh, they offered me 
three times what I was earning as an employed lawyer um, in the firm that I was earning. Of course, I took the job and I worked with them for I think about five years. Uh, from there, I talked to them. It was in the corporate world. I now set up the legal department in that uh, company and then talked um, uh, when I was about to leave. Because after five years, I was where I was going. I was, uh, I was not a company secretary per se because I've not been admitted as a company secretary. I'm not trained as a company secretary. But I dealt with their matters, with their, uh, the, the, the external lawyers. Uh, debt collection and what and follow up that they have their conventions and do that. Uh, there was a there were a small uh, company then, but they grew I was, as I was there. I remember the village market was being um, uh, built when I was uh, their, their 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 legal officer. Uh, the Ima Bank was set up because they had an uh, they were they had shares in the bank it was being set up as I was there, and I helped in that. Uh, also helped up in the setting up of the of the village market when it was uh, as the people were being more rotted. I can't remember the word was, but uh, if uh, I don't know whether you, the young ones will remember, but there used to be a, a, a slum where the village market was, and the people had to be removed for village market to start being constructed. I was right in the middle of that fight with the court and the court and everything else, uh, but we finally got them off. So I left them after five years now to set up, uh, not on my own, I s set up uh, uh, a small place with um, my best friend in college. Uh, that lasted for one year. All I can say, don't set up a farm be because the, a partnership because the person is your friend. You know, look for the strengths and weaknesses in each other. And even if it is your worst, in fact, the people I know that have set up farms where they are not friends, they are enemies, quote unquote, are the ones who have succeeded very, very, very well. Uh, setting up a farm with your best friend rarely works. At least for me, it did work. A year down the line, I had left because this was, we started in the beginning of uh, 1994. Uh, by the end of 1994, I knew I was not staying there and I called my I asked my friend to have a conversation and I told her I didn't think I was going to stay there anymore so then I started looking for an office uh, when I was with taxi to go home or we'll give you money for the taxi to go home we'll give it to all of us I think there were three of us employed at that time but for me I never used to take a taxi Langata was, was, was safe at that time I would go take a matatu and save that money bank the money and we would work on Saturday, and if you worked on Saturday, you are paid. You are paid uh, overtime, and he give you cash. Uh, if you work during the week, you also, if you worked after five, he paid you. So most of the time, we leave the office around eight, nine, because you wanted overtime. Uh, he did that for about two months, then he realized what we were doing most of the time, we would keep the work pending. Then five, you are busy doing the letters, you are busy drafting the planes, you are busy whatever so that you get the the the, the yeah the ta not only the taxi money but the overtime uh, so when he realized that he now um, cut down on the overtime and told as you try and finish your work I have to see what you've done you've done in the working hours then before you had to earn the overtime you have there must have been something to keep you doing your overtime uh, but for some of us we still ended up uh, making money because Saturday we worked Sundays. That mean, meant my personal life suffered, but I don't mind because I was looking into the future. What had I done? I had told myself that I wanted to open a farm. Looking for the offices uh, was not hard. Uh, View Park Towers, um, World Bank had just moved out. They looked for other offices, they just moved out. So the whole of View Park was a bit empty. Uh, when I came here, um, first, they did not want to, because they wanted me to take up the whole floor. I, I wasn't going to take the whole floor. That was going to be too much, too much for, um, a startup. for a startup. So I asked if I could just get a small place for a startup, you know, because I needed to buy the furniture and everything else. And they told me if I got somebody to take the rest of the floor, then uh, I would take, I would get what I wanted, a thousand square feet or seven hundred square feet. I got an audit firm which wanted the whole floor, so they took they took the whole floor, 
that they wanted me to be their subtenant. Uh, when I thought about it, I thought, no, I would get into a problem. What if you are not able to pay rent mm -hmm. and I was a subtenant? Or I pay rent to them and then they don't pay mm -hmm. and then I get thrown out. So he came and joined me here and I, I employed a secretary and one other clerk because I had a lot of uh, uh, matters at that time. I had a lot of, uh, uh, what are they called, uh, debt collection matters at that time. And my first clients, were Kingsway, Kingsway group of companies because I worked with them, they knew me and when I worked there I established a very good relationship with all the directors. So uh, when I set up the firm, they brought in their work and they also brought in their cousins work. So a lot of my practice in the first days I used to uh, appear for share companies or companies owned by shares. Uh, Asians are like that. They will, um, if they like your work, he will tell his cousin, brother, he will tell his brother, they are referrals, one and one and one one. So I got a lot of referrals. And then one of the other things I did when I opened this uh, farm, because I had kings with, but I knew I had rent to pay. First to Kirinyaga Road. I took my cards and I took myself. I loved high heels then. Wore my black suit, power suit, and I walked into the shops on Kirinyaga uh, Road. I started from the, no, I, the, I didn't start with Kirinyaga Road first, I started with River Road. I walked, walked, walked from one or whatever to another, asking whether they have any lawyers. I would ask some people who tell me, why would we need a lawyer? This is, we are not uh, criminals. And I said, you don't need a lawyer because you are a criminal. You need a lawyer because you ignorance of the law is not defense. In fact, that is what I used and to do. Yeah, to protect your business. Because there are some things to do with labor, there are some things to do with your taxes, there are some things to do, and you need a lawyer for that. And uh, I did that for two straight months, and they came up with clients, some of who are still my clients up to now, uh, River Road and uh, Abikeninaga Road, and then after that, I hit industry area. Uh, by the time I finished industry area, I had a good uh, whatever of clients. I had clients whom some would agree, because uh, they said they didn't have anything, but they, they wanted to be uh, my clients. So I tell them, you need to open a file. Uh, there is then, we were told about uh, charging five opening fees. I will charge 5,000 sheets for you to open a file and we open what the yellow files are called GM files, general files, where we'll do anything in the file, and then now if you have something specific, then you open a litigation file, or if you have a conveyancing, you're buying a house, you're selling a house, or uh, whatever it is that you're doing, then we open another file. And such people now, when they came to me, I did not need, I, I would not charge them file opening fees, because they already paid their 5,000 to open a file. They will just tell them, if it's a conveyancing, this is what I'm going to charge you, and this is how we are going to whatever this. And one of the things I do, I always give my clients a copy of the remuneration order. That's how come I've not had lots of fights with me as your lawyer. I buy a copy of your advocate's remuneration order. In fact, I used to buy, but now I make a copy, I make a copy of it. So you get a copy of that from my office, showing you the minimum, and I explain to you that what I'm charging there is the minimum. I'm not supposed to go below that. I can go above that, but I cannot go below this. So from the word go, you already know. If Kita tells me 200,000, the remuneration order says 200,000, then she's charging me the minimum. And with that, clients are happy because they know you're charging them. They can't get anything more. And if they get anything more, then chances are that advocate may end up at a district committee. I mean, tribunal because of undercutting. So I do a lot of that. So this tells you that a lot of clients will come in from referrals. And then you'll have your own relatives who maybe want to work done here and there and what. And for me, I told my relatives, it's when you come to me for work, it is work. Respect my work. Because that work, when you have a problem, what it earns me is what is going to help you. So even if my brother comes here, I have brother, my brothers have files here, my sisters have files here. They come, they open the files, they'll give me instructions, they will pay. 
maybe what happens is that I give them a, a latitude as to when to pay, but they pay. So family will also come in. And then the other uh, uh, people that give you work are people you are in school with. Uh, I sought out people I was in school with from primary. And for me, I'm lucky because I schooled in different schools. I was in Nyeri, I was in Naivasha, I was in Homa Bay, I was in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Kakamega. And all those people, I, what I did is I would go to school. Like in the primary, I remember going to ask for a list of the people. And then, yeah, and then church. I, at that time, I, I, I was going to Sitam on uh, Valley Road. Uh, church, I never felt ashamed about going with my cards and giving whoever I sat next to, and I never sat at one place. I, because I was looking for clients, I sat in different places. And every day after the service, I would leave them with my card. I'm a lawyer in the event, in, in the event you have anything. And did I bring me work? Yes, it did. I don't know how many files, but there are people who call me and tell me, Ah, you gave me your card or somebody, I asked somebody about a lawyer, they said, do you go to the same church? I have this problem, can you assist? And where I was not able to assist, but maybe because it's an area of the law I was not good at or whatever, I would refer that work to, give, refer that work to somebody else who would then now, if they have something they know I'm good at, they would give me. Yeah, fellow, yeah, fellow advocates. So from fellow advocates, you also give, uh, you'll also get work. Uh, sometimes it's no what um, what I noticed like um, a young girl I was talking to sometime last year said the files we give out are the stack files mm. and it's true a lot of the time you'll get stack files but find a way you can be able to unravel what has been stuck mm. yeah because for me I'd get those to, uh, whatever maybe it's a, it's a matter a bank and what fighting over something then I read through the file and I find out now what this family, what is it about them? Mm. And then I will go talk to them. And then I remember there's one family, I will not mention the case because it's one, it was one of those sensitive cases and the family may not want, like me mentioning. But I remember sitting down with a person who's now since uh, deceased and then telling him, you're better off sorting out this with the bank right now than sorting it out 20 years down the line and the money would have like tripled our counter tripled. Uh, he was he was quite harsh with me. He told me now I'm, I'm coming to you for you to fight for this case for me in court and you're telling me I sit down with these uh, people to, to, to sort out. These are just robbing me of my property. And I told him you, you go the way I've advised you to go or if you don't for me, I will charge you for the advice I've given you because I've given you the advice. Mm -hmm. Luckily for me, he paid mm -hmm. for the advice, but he went elsewhere. Uh, about seven years down the line, when he came to this office, he had spent so much money, the interest had gone up. And what he came to tell me is like, Dorcas, I wish I'd listened to you and sorted out that matter. A lot of us are, as advocates, we are litigious. You know, we want, okay, we say that's how we make money. Yes. But do you know now from that, uh, he's now since deceased, from that family, I am handling many other matters. Because he gave me other matters. Yes. And you tell me, I know it will be sort of, whatever it is, I know you will tell us the, will tell us the best way to walk. Yes. And for me, I look at cases and see if it's a case that can be sorted out, let us sort it out, even as lawyers. Let us sort it out. Because I sort out that case. I get my money fast, quickly. The 100000 I'll make today and the 100000 I'll make two years down the line, the one I make today is worth more than what I'll make two years down the line. So for me, I look at how fast can I get my money on this, whatever. And how fast? Is it the, are the courts the best way? For me, maybe you'll be asking, but you are not a mediator. I'm a more ammediator in, in Kenya. The first lot, Nyamu was our trainer, just retired Nyamu now. Uh, I was in the first lot that was trained as mediators and I did whatever, ADR uh, with uh, Justice um, Fatuma Sichale and the rest. We did the exams, we passed, but I have never practiced as a mediator. I do my mediation, Kinubani Yeah. You have not taken professional. And I have not taken it. Like nobody would call me as a mediator. 
Yeah, normally I'm the one who calls people now to meet Yeah, but usually I find that I'm able to handle cases without the the, 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 the infighting, the bad fighting of the courts. Because business, what I ask businessmen is like, what do you want out of this? Do you want the relationship to continue or do you want, uh, like I call it the ketuman or to achane kabisa? Because the courts are such that you end up achane kabisa. And then you find when you've done that, this is the best person you used to get your own materials for. Now you're buying from somebody else who's more expensive because we'll be concerned about the For the long term, it's not fun. Yeah, it is not. It, it, it is not a good one. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that we close the courts. No, they have their own issues. I mean, they have their own uh, uh, use, usefulness. But uh, most of the time, as lawyers, sometimes we just end up uh, prolonging matters that we ought not to. Uh, in my view, that is. So I got work from family, from friends also, uh, from friends, my own friends, you know, uh, I got, we got something, I'm buying my first house, or we are starting a chama, can you do the papers for us, or I'm doing, um, uh, I'm starting a company, can you do the incorporation for us. As I started, there was a lot of incorporation, that used to be easy money. Then the other easy money was bail applications. Uh, I used to go to the courts a lot to do bail applications. Before now, we say you know, by bail is a matter of right, and well, even then it was a matter of right, but many people didn't know that. So they always used to take lawyers. And even I remember one magistrate in Makadara who used to start very, very, not Makadara, it was Kibera, Kibera. She used to start early to keep lawyers off. When I discovered her modus operandi, I started going earlier. 6 30 would find me at Kibera. And when she opened her court and started with the, with the people for bail and what they mentioned, I would be there and I would, and I would be whatever. Oh, one time she asked me, Kita, we, you don't need, these people can get as a matter of right. I said, no, but I'm also, I also have to earn. And I'm here and they're okay if I would, they are with me because then they are sure they are going to get the, the bail. Said, but I can refuse. I said, but you only refuse when there are good reasons. If you refuse, then I'm going to go to the high court. And I'm sure you don't want it on your record that every time in the high, you're refusing bail, to give people bail for flimsy reasons. Because if they can afford what the bail is, then you ought to release them. But what did I do in regard to bail? I just didn't apply for bail and then leave the client there. I used to process the papers. And in processing the papers, I met many other clients. You may ask how. Because when somebody has um, is inside, you see when they come, many of their relatives and friends come. They want to be stand with them. So then I would, I would go out there after he's been granted bail. As I wait for the file to be taken uh, taken up, I tell them I'm going to charge you an extra 2000 mm -hmm. Charge two thousand for bail. Then I'm going to charge you an extra two thousand, but I will process everything until you leave the cell, mm -hmm. and then I will then go talk to the people downstairs. Are we only client wangu asirudishwe asipelekwe industry area? I am dealing with the matter. If it's if it was thick, I tell them as pelekwe committee. I am dealing. I'm dealing with the I'm processing the papers, so I would process the papers for them. So instead of earning two thousand, then I would have earned. 4,000. And why do I mention that? Because as lawyers, God gave us brains. Yes. Most of the time we don't use them. We sit on them. You must look for opportunities to earn yourself an extra cent and earn, earn it legitimately. Yes. So now, instead of just asking for the, uh, doing the bail application, I am also doing the processing of the papers. When the, when the, when the whoever it is that is standing surety is being interviewed, I'm there. If it is a car they need valuation, I am the one who has fixed that valuation, get, gotten them to, to have the valuation done. If there's any letter that needs to come from a chief, I have already had them prepare that. And what I would do, I would tell the client from the very beginning, even if it's referred to, to me by somebody, says we need this, are you going to have a car? Are you bringing a logbook? Do you have the car with you? Uh, is the logbook whatever? Do you have a valuation? We need to do the valuation. So then I do. Then somebody would come, oh, that lawyer was very, very good. So I'd end up, end up getting many, many matters. But I only did bail because basically I don't do criminal law. So, so you could not proceed in the matter? Yeah, what I would do, yeah, I would do only the bail 
and then I'll refer to them to the people to do that, to do the, the lawyers now to do the main hearing. And uh, that also endeared me with my colleagues because they knew Docas is referring to us work and if they had anything convincing then they would bring to me. Yeah. At least yes. you have shared to us, because most advocates right now, young mm. advocates, they don't have jobs. And yes. most people, they, they don't take such opportunities. Mm. They are saying, most people maybe go applying to law firms, yeah. and yet they have that opportunity, opportunity. to mm. do such work. Mm. So another thing I would want to ask, how do you, did you handle your finances? Like, when starting out, because that's another difficult thing. Also, mm. me, I have just started a small law firm. Yeah. But separating personal to business is something so... Because you, you feel you are basically the business. Because yes. what you are doing is what you are supposed to use to pay your rent and everything. Yeah, so how, do you, how can you advise us on handling finance? Um, that is the bane of many lawyers. Because nobody teaches us finances. Yes. The lawyers that are doing well among the young lawyers and, um, are the ones who are teach, being taught finance and they're also being taught law. When you have law and finance, then you do very, very well. Yes. Basically, many of us are people who know credit, debit, and uh, we have those problems that we had. Some of us had to receipt accounts yes. because we never understood the debit and credit. Uh, you must never, ever touch your client's money. Never, ever. I say that, and I say it from the bottom of my heart, but it is not easy. And many lawyers have had, because if I am sick, I have two million in the account. It is client's money. And I am going to maybe have a bigger problem if I don't pay a lot of, uh, I found out when I was sitting on the disciplinary committee, I served on the disciplinary committee for two elections. Uh, I got elected the first time and the second time, uh, the third time I did not run. I had served for six years and I thought that was, um, that was enough. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the biggest problem that was there was people misusing clients' money. And uh, when one digs, I, I would try to do that because I would, I would look at it and I'd say, we have been taught you don't touch clients' money. How come it is that you, you then took this clients' money? And then maybe sometimes it would be, oh, my wife was sick, I was an sick. Emergency. Yeah, there was an emergency. The, my, my, re, my office was going to be play, uh, closed. My rent was due, so I paid, expecting so-and-so to pay me. But he didn't pay, and that got me into problems. You have to either teach yourself, because you people can go on the internet and learn, but you must learn how to manage your finances so that you never touch clients money you're able to do everything you need to do with your budget what do i need there are those things that you know every month you need to pay your people's salaries your rent your taxes your vat your work that has to be paid that must be provided for every time so that even if in a month you see you're making a loss you then have um, a friend of mine has what uh, invented this word better to die BTD account, a better to die account, an account that you don't touch unless it's absolutely necess necessary, where you put something little there. Go to that account or even your savings account, remove money from there and pay off what you need to pay off, but don't go to clients, uh, uh, whatever. And I'm not saying that because I'm an angel, because I have gotten myself into problems with clients' money. I have, that has happened. And um, what happened in this particular case, no fault of my own, fortunate, fortunately, a client gives me a check and uh, I'm supposed to pay somebody else. The lawyer is on my back, he's senior than me. Once his, uh, his money, he, the lawyer was selling his own property uh, somewhere in Doresho and uh, he was on my back, he wants his money. And this client is not a client who had ever given me a check that uh, had bounced. So I write a check for three, it was three million. I write a check for three million and I send it. Guess what happened? My client's check bounces and mine, the bank calls me and tells me, 
you are short of about um, I think it was about six hundred, seven hundred thousand. Because I had other money, which was not my money, it was clients, it was a check on clients account, which was clients' money. And I'm being told I'm short of about seven hundred something, almost eight hundred thousand. What does he do? Does he pay? Then how am I going to pay it? I have a very good relationship with my bank. So the manager said, no, no, just hold on a bit. Because those days you could hold a check up to, I think, two, three days. Hold on a bit as I try to get hold of the client so that I'm sure he's going to give me cash or uh, 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 give, it, give me away, deposit the money. I'll send him the, the, the account number. I deposit the money so that they check, their checks goes through. I call my colleague. My colleague is hitting the roof. In fact, now he no longer takes my call. He now uh, handles me to his, hands me to his employee to deal with the matter. So the employee, of course, is a lot of uh, uh, pressure and everything else. Anyway, the long and short of it is I ended up getting sued. I had to sell a property. At that time, I had a house. So I sold a house at a loss, a very, very big loss. But the person I sold to, when I was selling it to him, I told him, I am selling this house because I have an issue. It is worth this much, but you're giving me this much, even you, you know. I hope you're going to use the house just as whatever, I'll pay you back this money when I get it. Once I get the money, I'll pay you back and I want my house back. At that time, I had a tenant in the house. Anyway, I sold the, the, the house to the person, gave me to uh, half what it was worth, I paid off the money, the three million that uh, was owed to the other uh, uh, whatever. But that was, I had been taken to court. A suit was filed under originating summons. Uh, the person handling the, the suit then was the late uh, Justice Onguto. He was then employed in the, in the farm. So Justice Onguto, he knew me and he knew, no, I know doctors, I understand. And what you're saying is, is I know you're not lying. My client had taken off to South Africa or something. Those we could not raise him. Trying to call him on the cell phone, nothing. Trying to get his family here, nobody had money to to assist me. So anyway, I paid, and before it came out, I'd gotten the money, I'd gotten the person to buy my house at at that uh, at that loss, and I paid, and the matter was withdrawn. At least. Uh, it went well, and I asked a, a colleague to be the, the handling the matter. He handled the matter for me, and we sorted it out. So, just do, deal with your clients' money, and do, your clients are not your friends. Well, that's another mistake. Yes, your colleagues are your friends. Your clients are not your friends, because that that person did not care much. He paid me that three million in more than 15 years. Yani, a thousand, lost I had lo I'd lost my house. No, God, God was with me. I got my house back. Oh, okay. The person oh. came, but he wanted only a million on top. Uh, I had sold the house for three million. He wanted four million. I looked for it. I gave him, he you gave me back the, the house. He had not even transferred. He had, he had the transfer forms and everything and what, but he gave me back my house. After about three years, he gave me back my house. But the client paid me slowly for 15 years. I think I received the last payment about three years ago, mm -hmm. three or four years ago. Maybe that's, that's one mm -hmm. good lesson. Um, yeah, so never. never. Yeah, your clients are not your friends. And treat your colleagues with a lot of respect. You never know when they'll step in the gap for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because your colleagues will be there with you forever. Clients yes, come and go. And, go. Yes. and then the other people I got as my clients were my, my former teachers. Mm -hmm. My former teachers in school. Um, I looked for where they were. Uh, when I was admitted, I went look for my geography teacher, looked for my history teacher, and um, they also look, got their families to come and uh, give me some work. Some of them are still my clients up to now. Some passed on, and uh, the family maybe thought are using other people. I don't know. Have not seen them. Yeah, but uh, those were good, a, a good source of. Uh, of, 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 of uh, referrals for clients. We just meet and talk. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been very, me and myself as the angler have learned a lot, and I'm sure the viewers will also be are going to learn a lot from this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to join us today. And thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I really feel honored. Mm -hmm. 
so I thank you for inviting us yeah. into your office also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. All the interview here. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.